the walking season is upon us. And today, I'm taking on the Cotswolds Way. Now, the Cotswolds Way is 102 miles, or 100, depending on where you start from, from Chipping Camden all the way over to Bath. It takes in the, um, the splendour of the Cotswolds countryside and also a number of different counties. I've been informed that you can do this walk in as little as four days, three if you're in a rush. I've got a little bit more than that, so I'm going to take my time. But of course, normal rules apply. This isn't a bespoke how-to. This is my take on the Cotswolds way. Um, and if I can uh, give you those handy hints and tips, I'll try to do so along the way. If you're wondering about the pack weight, well, I was really pleased with myself yesterday because this was the weight that I'd originally packed. However, this is now the weight that I've got. And that's all in, to be fair, including all your consumables, food, of which I've got quite a bit, water and gas. It's still there or thereabouts, the weight that I took on the Hebridean Way. And if you want to have a look at that, I'll bang that up in the box somewhere and you can see what went on there. But in my quest to be lightweight, I've uh, fallen foul to the just in case principles. I'll get there in the end. That said, today, day one, sees me walking from Chipping Camden down to Winchcombe, or just short of Winchcombe, because I've got a campsite booked for tonight. Um, in total, I think the first leg is 17 or 18 miles. Let's get it done.
day one, over and done with. Um, Chipping Camden to Broadway, Broadway to Stanway, Stanway to Winchcombe, or just short of Winchcombe. It's about two miles to my end destination. Um, and I'll sweep those miles up tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm here at the Hales Fruit Farm and Campsite, 11 pound a pitch, and I booked it online last night. It is the only place I have booked for this trip. So we'll see what the, uh, the next few days has in store. Um, my thoughts on the Cotswolds Way thus far, well, in many respects, it's a lot like the South Downs Way in as much as the vistas are just epic, absolutely gorgeous. The, uh, the villages that I've walked through, the epitome of chocolate box, and I don't think the camera or I have done it any justice. That said, the route itself is quite flat for day one, um, very low lying with a few steep rises interspersed just to keep you keen, but nothing to worry about. Um, I'm gonna get myself in, get the tent pitched, get some scran on, um, relax for the rest of the evening, uh, get myself up nice and early tomorrow morning, bring on day two. morning of day two. Um, today's leg takes me over to a place called Cleve Hill and then from Cleve Hill over to Dowdswell and from Dowdswell over to Leckhampton Hill. Um, Winchcombe to Leckhampton Hill I'm aware is about 14 miles however I've still got another couple of miles from yesterday to get to Winchcombe so it looks like I might be doing the same type of mileage that I did yesterday. Um, the campsite, really, really good. Um, looks a bit tired in places um, on the actual campgrounds, but the showers are absolutely epic and everything is really, really clean. So don't let the, uh, the aesthetics fool you. Uh, there's a farm shop and a little cafe, but uh, unfortunately for me, it opens at nine and it closes at about half past four. So bear that one in mind if you're on your way here to camp. Um, there are a couple of campsites en route to Le Campton Hill. Um, the first one is, I'm not used to it because it's too close, but there is a second one over by Seven Springs and that is a couple of miles short of Le Campton Hill. So I'll have a look and see what the score is when I get there see if I can get in. Uh, if not, I'll look for something else later on, but for now, let's get on it.
day two at a close. Um, these are the miles that I got from the internet in relation to uh, the distances of me passing through the various places. And this is what I've actually done today. So it's been a, a long day for me today. And that's taken into consideration that I've had an extra few miles from Howes Abbey to Winchcombe. And that said, the route for day two, um, again, pretty much South Downs Way-esque. The weather's been glorious. So the views have been absolutely superb. Rolling hills, uh, deep valleys, uh, amazing. Still hard underfoot. And for this particular section, uh, very much uphill and down dale, and quite a lot of that, let me tell you, all the way up to Cleve Hill, which is the highest point of the Cotswolds Way at 317 metres. Um, after Cleve Hill, there's a steady descent down towards Dowdswell. Um, and about a mile out, it becomes very, very, very steep and it goes on for that mile. Um, you get a bit of respite at the bottom down by the reservoir and then it's another mile incline, a very steep incline. It doesn't quite reach the 317 metres, but it makes a good fist of it. Um, so be prepared on that one. After that, it's pretty much straightforward all the way down to this campsite, big skies, camping and glamping down at Seven Springs. Now, it costs £13 to pitch a tent, which is very, very reasonable. Um, but when I did book it, and I booked it online on the way down here this morning, um, there's a addition of £12 for the Greener Camping Club. And I don't think, from what I was reading, that you can camp here without being a member. Um, so that was non-negotiable. So it's £25 in total. Um, was it worth it? Well, on the face of it, I'd like to have been given the option. However, I've never seen a campsite so manicured. It's absolutely gorgeous. So if I do come back, um, the pitch will just be 13 pounds. Um, so you can make your own mind up as to whether nothing was worth it. The owners here are really, really nice. Uh, and the facilities are really good as well. Um, so I'd give it a go if I came back again. Um, going back to this section of, of, the, of the walk, there's very little in the way of food and water. Um, and you saw that at Cleve Hill Golf Course, I had a bit of lunch. Uh, and let me tell you, after that, I didn't come across anything at all. Um, very little in the way of water, even for me carrying a, uh, a water filter and nothing in the way of food. So unless you stock up there, you're going to have to conserve and conserve well. So um, that's just a note for you in the future. Um, uh, Winchcombe to Dowdswell and beyond, stock up on your water and your food. I'm going to dive in the shower now. It's been well earned. Have something to eat and then uh, think about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, it's a glorious day. So I'm going to uh, soak up the last bit of sunshine. I'll see you tomorrow. Day three. Um, today sees me doing about 15 miles. Um, my intention is to go to a place called Birdlip first of all, and then from Birdlip on to Painswick and I'll look for some camping opportunities when I get there. It's a glorious day so let's get to it.
Seven Springs over to Painswick. Uh, now the route. Uh, this section is very hilly, which is not a surprise considering you've got to do Lexhampton Hill, Crickley Hill, and the world famous cheese chasing Cooper's Hill. Uh, I'm a bit annoyed now because today is the 25th of May and uh, on Monday, two days away, 27th, they're actually doing the event, the cheese rolling event, so I'm going to miss it. Never mind, I'm sure I'll see it on the news. Um, but interspersed with those hills are a number of different types of rises um, ranging from 200 to 300 metres and they are quite steep. So bear that in mind. Nothing to be um, too scared of because they're not that long uh, as a gradient, but uh, you will know all about them. Other than that, the route is, well, it's fairly flat through the forest sections and nature reserves, a really nice place to find yourself when the sun is out. If it was raining though, I'm not sure it'd be so much fun. Um, that said, I'm in Painswick now. Um, I've just filled up my uh, water bottles and what have you at the golf course. I've been really kind in there. And just a, a, a note, uh, Crickley Hill is the last place that you can actually stock up on food and water. Um, and to get to Painswick, it's a long day, so bear that one in mind. I've got nowhere to camp at the moment. So my intention is to go into town, see if I can find some food and then head off into tomorrow's portion of the walk and see whether or not there is any spots that I can use to uh, get my head down. So enough of this. I'm going to go and try and fill my face and then I'll come back to you tomorrow. Well, this morning speaks for itself. Um, overcast, blustery and raining rained all night. Um, today's route uh, takes me over to King Stanley first and then from King Stanley over to Dursley. The whole route is around 17 to 18 miles, so the book says. So uh, in this weather, I think it's going to be a steady plod.
the start of day five. Well, let's talk about the end of day four. Painswick to Dursley, taken in King Stanley. Uh, the route out to Painsley, well, it was wet and muddy, and I kind of got what I was talking about yesterday. And no, it was no fun at all. Uh, the section is mainly woodland, uh, and in the wet, the whole route is an absolute mud fest, so choose your steps wisely, or you can say goodbye to those Nike Air Jordans you might have been wearing. Uh, there are a couple of steep climbs to keep you interested, uh, and then when you get into King Stanley, if you are low on provisions, you really must stock up there in that nice co-op. Because um, if you don't, there is nothing until um, Dursley. Uh, no options for provisions or water, to bear that in mind. The town is just off the route, about three quarters of a mile. Uh, but it's well worth taking that deviation. Um, once you get out of town, there is a steep climb to contend with. Um, so if you're empty, I feel sorry for you. After that, it levels itself out. Uh, moorlands, fields, and flat plateaus, a nice steady descent for quite a bit. Uh, now the second before Dursley, about a mile and a half, two miles out. Uh, you've got a massive climb to contend with. Um, and then when you get to the top, you've got a steady descent. And then it drops off the face of the earth, um, really steep down. And the last 300 or so metres, um, it's a narrow channel which is caked in mud. So if it has been raining... <sighs> It's going to be a bit of a Krypton factor, a salt course kind of thing for you. Um, walking poles, absolute must. However, if you've got a sled and a sense of adventure, it will probably do you better going down that part. Um, now, just when you think it's all over, uh, if your legs are tired and you can't take any more, you've got another severe climb. Um, the last one of the day, going up to Come Long Down. Uh, if you survive that, it's an easier trek into Dursley. I'm currently in Ash Plains campsite, which is about a mile and a half outside of Dursley, so I'm going to have to walk back to uh, the route to get going this morning. £20 a pitch. Facilities are absolutely superb. Um, today sees me leaving here and heading off to... Hawkesbury Upton. But first, I'm going to hit Wooten on Edge, have a bit of a rest there, and then uh, crack on. Uh, it has been raining this morning, it's just stopped, so I'm going to finish packing up and hit the road.
Day five, the uh, section from Dursley to Wooden under Edge and then under Hawkesby Upton, 14 miles. All I can say is the Cotswolds way is more like the Cotswolds Y for this section. Uh, a mixed bag of give with one hand and wrench it away from under your feet with the other. Um, the walk back to the route this morning was about one and a half miles from the campsite and it was chugging it down with rain this morning. So it was just a head down kind of affair. Uh, there's only one climb of any note and that's up towards the Tyndale Monument. And if you're still not friends with yourself over the past couple of days, you can do the 200 steps to the top. Um, if you're not going to stop and have something to eat in Wooten Under Edge when you get there, then don't go up the stairs of the Tyndale Monument, and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, Wooten Under Edge is a really nice place to be. It has um, a co-op, um, a pub, and lots of cafes. Um, the Edge Cafe is where I had my breakfast. And as you can see, it was glorious. Uh, moving on from Wooten Under Edge, this is where the Tyndale Steps come into play because the scenery around Wooten gives you a false hope. It's lovely, um, picturesque, picture postcard, low lying and flat. And then the ascent of all ascents, extremely steep out of Wooten and it just keeps on going. Uh, eventually you turn left onto a road and that doesn't fill you with any uh, joy either because the hill just continues. I mean, this thing never ended. The, the only thing that was palatable was the, the fact that the sun was out by that time. Um, if it was raining, it would be really miserable. Um, you do spend the entire time when you're on the road sharing it with oncoming cars. Um, which can be a blessing if you're knackered, uh, but a hindrance to all um, Cotswold Way land speed record walkers. Um, and when the road does start to show you mercy, you look out because there is no bench at the top of that to reward you for your efforts, which is absolutely typical. But you know what, you have, you've got to move on. Um, the next section um, is more rewarding with um, level open fields that contour around, a real pleasure to walk in. And then it's bushwhacker time. You're funneled into a very narrow corridor um, and this is the route off the hill. Um, head high bush uh, to fight through. And also um, it obscures your view of the Cotswold Stone Rumble which is underneath you. And this goes on for about 150 metres and then it's another sheer drop into the Woodland Channel uh, with our old friends Mud and Loose Rubble to greet you. And once you've dealt with that, you're back into the open fields uh, and you can breathe a sigh of relief. And the rest of it is actually really pleasant and it almost makes you forget the insanity that you left behind earlier. Um, I've made it to and through Hawkesbury Upston, uh, having stopped off at the local pub on the main road uh, for a quick drink. Uh, the pub doesn't do food until six o'clock in the evening, so I'll be aware. Uh, I'm currently wild camping at the moment, so I'm going to get off and have a, uh, a watch for lie. Uh, Tor Martin is the destination tomorrow. Uh, I think it's only seven and a half miles, and I've done a couple of miles already. Um, I decided to break down the next couple of legs into singular legs because I've been doing doubles uh, the whole time. Uh, as I said earlier on in the video, um, it looked like I was going to finish earlier than I wanted to uh, and as a result that's why I'm cutting down the mileage. So two very short days and then the end as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, scran on to get some kip start again in the morning the morning of day six i've left hawkesbury upton um i uh, took a mile or so 
out of the uh, the next route and wild camped and I'm now on the way over to uh, Tor Martin taking in the uh, the villages of Little Sudbury and Old Sudbury when I get to Tor Martin which is seven and a half miles from Hawkesbury Upton so it's a short one today I'm going to be camping in the grounds of the Compass Inn I phoned ahead yesterday um, and apparently uh, they're very uh, good to walkers and have allowed me to camp in the grounds and the pitch price is only £10. What's not to like? The end of day six, I should talk about. And I'll start off with where I finished up at the Compass Inn uh, in Tor Martin, Best Beston, uh, a hotel which allows you to pitch up in their grounds, front and rear, for £10 a night. And for that, you get um, an access key to the hotel to use the facilities. Although there's no shower to speak of. Um, I've spoken to the manager and if you hit the hotel at the right time and they've got a spare room, they will allow you to use the shower facilities in that room for a small cleaning charge, which I think is only right. Um, the food here is really, really reasonable and you get lots of it. And I've always said that if a facility um, puts themselves out to help the weary traveller, you should reward them with custom. So if you are stopping in Tor Martin, Please give this one a, uh, a bit of a shout. They're really, really good. In relation to the route, what a contrast to the day before. Um, this is, or was, a, a low-lying, flat, easy route uh, through some really quaint villages and a couple of um, estates or um, family residences with massive amounts of land, really, really well manicured, an absolute delight to walk through, and the only thing that made it better was if the sun was shining. Clearly yesterday it was torrential rain, so I spent most of my uh, evening drying my stuff out rather than filming. Um, just bear in mind that from Hawkesby Upton through to Tor Martin, 
Um, there's very little in the way of restocking until you get to Old Sodbury, where there's a pub, which was closed in the early hours of the morning when I uh, turned up, and the service station, which was open, uh, and that's your only um, chance to refuel and restock, so take yourself up on that. Uh, today, day seven, um, I'm coming from Tor Martin through to Cold Ashton, which is only six and a half miles. And from Cold Ashton to Bath is a further 10 miles. So, technically speaking, if I was that way inclined, I could finish this today. I am starting late, um, but it's it's more than doable. I've walked more miles during this uh, this week than I could do today. However, as I said before, I'm trying to slow myself down and actually enjoy what's going on. So I've split the um, the sections up. Cold Ashton is for me today. I'm staying at Hill Farm, which is actually a further mile, mile and a bit, which I'm still on the route um, uh, from Cold Ashton, which means that tomorrow, day eight, I'll only have about nine miles to do. So, the sun is out, and I'm gonna take advantage of that and have a, uh, a quaint stroll. I'll see you later. The end of day seven. Tor Martin to Cold Ashton. A very easy, easy day. Actually, quite enjoyable. Uh, and this would be no problem come rain or shine. I'm in the village of Cold Ashton right now, as I've said. Uh, I'm just taking a breather and taking in that glorious view. I'm staying at Hill Farm, as I've said earlier on. And that's about a mile, a mile and a bit away. Um, it's en route. And that means that tomorrow, which is the last day, instead of doing 10 miles, it's going to be around nine, possibly even less. So I'm gonna take five more minutes out, get myself down to uh, the campsite. And yeah, we'll go from there. Day eight, and I'm about to leave Hill Farm. It's a great place. In reality, it's not that suited for campers. There really is only two pitches to speak of. It's more for the uh, the hotel traveller. That said, it's still a fantastic place to come. Anyway, day eight, Cold Ashton to Bath is the route, which would have been 10, 10 and a half miles. As I'm already a mile or so into the route, it's only nine for me. So, bring on Bath Abbey.
the Cotswolds Way, 102 miles from Chipping Camden over to Bath. A tale of two entities. On the one hand, rolling hills, uh, glorious vistas, enchanting villages to walk through and great people. And on the other, some butt kicking sections that include some ridiculously steep inclines and even more ridiculous descents. If you were doing this um, during a week of extreme sunshine, I don't think you'd have a problem. However, you've got to remember that as beautiful as the Cotswolds is, and it is absolutely stunning, anything other than the most glorious of weather, and you're gonna to have to contend with the fact that you're gonna have a new friend along the way, and that's mud, and lots of it. Do I have any tips? Well, if you're a through hiker and you're carrying all your stuff, the opportunities to um, restock and refuel midsection is few and far between. And in relation to water, um, I carry a water filter and trying to find a water source became a bit of a game, so bear that in mind. Putting all that aside, the Cotswolds Way is one of those long distance walks that I urge you to consider putting into your adventure list. Uh, as for mine, this one's nearly over and done with. But fear not, I've got plenty more penned in for the rest of this year. I'm gonna uh, get myself off and get to stand in front of Bath Abbey and congratulate myself on a job well done. Uh, this adventure is soon to be over. Thanks for coming with me. I'll see you around.